Good morning. This is the Faith Builders Program coming to you from Oasis Christian Center, a family church in Smith Station, Alabama. We invite you to listen to Pastors Rock and Sharon Edmonds as they minister the Word of God to us. Our church is a non-denominational Word of Faith church. We hope that this program is a blessing to you and that you will tell your friends and relatives to tune in. Now here are Pastors Rock and Sharon. Praise the Lord. Welcome to all of you here this morning. You've got to watch it by social media. We just welcome you all in and uh, just um, invite you to receive what God has for you today. God's presence is here strong this morning. I mean, praise and worship was awesome. It was. The presence of God was so good. And um, and He is going to be with us through this whole service this morning. Amen. 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 We invite His presence Amen. today. Amen. Amen. Before I turn it over to Pastor Day, I wanted to speak a word of uh, blessing over you, a, a confession. So just receive what the Word has. Because the, these come from the Word of God. They come straight from God's Word. So I declare, you have no care. For you cast the whole of your care over on Jesus. For He cares for you. You have no heavy burden because you have taken Jesus' yoke, which is easy and light. You have the mind of Christ, and the wisdom of God flows in and through you. Yes. Amen. And the and um, flows in and through you. The fullness of God dwells in you. You are skilled in the Word of God and righteousness, and call those things which be not as though they were. Amen. You shall prosper and be in health in Jesus' name. And I declare that no weapon formed against you will prosper, and any tongue that rises up against you in judgment shall be condemned. You are bold as a lion. You have no fear. You are filled with abundance and prosperity all the days of your life. And Jesus is Lord over you and your household. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. 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 Glory. Praise God. Glory. Yes, and I love, you know, that we're, it, I really, it kind of hit me strong on that, you know, that um, Jesus is Lord over you and your household. You know, we've been praying for the households of the uh -huh. people here in the church. And the enemy doesn't like prayer. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just don't like it. But you know what? That's just too bad, isn't it? Because we are a praying church. Praise Amen. God. We Amen. are. And so, uh, you know, y'all just uh, hook your faith with ours that you're going to have a turnaround in your family in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Now turn over to Pastor. That was a word of knowledge. And she just operated in that. I'm telling you, claim that. Because uh, right. that was straight off the press right, right there. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's just, uh, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just plead the blood of Jesus over the rest of this service. And we just thank you that the eyes of our understanding are enlightened according to Ephesians 1 and 18. And I thank you, Father God, we see things we've never seen. We hear things we've never heard. And we get deeper in your word today than we've ever been. And I declare your word gets deeper in us than it's ever been. I thank you, Father God, we're hungry for the word. We're hungry for revelation. We're hungry to be changed into the image of Jesus Christ this day by your word. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, I know um, we're always saying that we love the Word, and we got a lot of Word today. Amen? Amen? And I, I just, um, mm, the title today is, I Have Learned the Secret. <clears throat> I ask you, if you will, to get your Bibles and go to Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 11. We're going to start at verse number 11, go through verse number 13. This is in the New Living Translation. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it's with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. 
And I also want to read 1 Timothy 6 and 6. This is in the Amplified. But godliness actually is a source of great gain when accompanied by contentment. And that contentment which comes from a sense of inner confidence based on the sufficiency of God. Now, the definition or some of the definitions of contentment. A state of happiness and satisfaction. Like a peaceful ease of mind. It's an attitude, a state of mind. Um, there again, a state of happiness, satisfaction. No matter what your circumstances may be. Now that's, that's the key right there. Because you know, a lot of, uh, matter of fact, I read one definition that said, um, you know, it's contentment when all your circumstances are right. That's really not a proper, you know, I checked it. It's just not, that's not what contentment means. You've got to be content when your circumstances are not right. And that's what the Bible teaches. Because I tell you, our circumstances are never going to be perfect. They're just not going to be perfect. There's always going to be some little something that's going to pop up. And we've got to learn to be content even no matter what we're going through. Okay? Now, I want you all to say this. God's Word says, God's word says that, I can be that I can be content no matter what, no matter what. My, circumstances my circumstances may be. God's Word says, I'm content no matter what my circumstances may be. Hallelujah. Well, now I want to I want to just uh, clarify something. You know, when we say contentment and some of the definitions of contentment, I'm not saying it's wrong to want, want things or to believe for things because it's not. We know that. But it, it's wrong not to be happy and content if we don't get it. Thank you very much. Material things do not bring contentment. Okay, now, I want, you, I want you to hear this. Contentment says, I have more than I deserve. So contentment is very thankful. It's very satisfied. Entitlement says, I deserve more than I have. Did you catch there's an error there? And God's not pleased with that error. Because you can't be believing that you deserve more than you have. You can, you can believe for whatever you are believing for. But it's not in the fact that we deserve it. I, I heard Brother Hagen mention that in, in healing. He said a lot of times he said people came to him and they said, how come people that have never lived for God a day in their life will come up and they will get healed like nobody's business? And somebody that's been living for God for 40 years won't get healed of, of nothing. And, and he said, I've, I've seen it over and over. Why is that? He said, because the, the ones that have been living for the Lord 40 years, they come up bragging on themselves. They're entitled to their healing. They're saying, well, you know, I've served you this long and I've tithed and given offerings and I've been faithful in your house. And they're reminding God of all the, the, the they think, the to-do list that they've done. And they're reminding Him, that's the reason I deserve, I deserve, that's the key word, I deserve my healing. And the other people that have never lived for God a day in their life, they're saying, God, have mercy on me. Please forgive me. And they're falling over in that mercy and they're getting their healing. You, we'll never get it by bragging on ourselves or what we've done or what we've accomplished. I promise you it won't work that way. And it doesn't please the Lord. Okay. Okay, now, <clears throat> a lot of times we think, well, you know, okay, what if the Apostle Paul had said, when I'm not in jail, I'll be content. When I'm not, you know, being beat with 39 strikes five times, I'll be content. When I'm not shipwrecked three different times, I'll be content. Then I'll write three, two-thirds of the New Testament. But I can't write it now because I'm going through something. I can't be content right now in the middle of everything that is going on. So, now here's what he said in 2 Corinthians. This, we know what 2 Corinthians now. It was a letter from Paul at that time. This is in the Amplified Version, uh, 2 Corinthians 12 and 10. So I am well pleased with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak in human strength, then I am strong, truly able, truly powerful. Get this, truly drawing from God's strength. So to be content in all of our circumstances, no matter what we go through, and we go through some junk. I mean, you know, houses burn down, houses flood. I mean, we lose loved ones. I mean, things, unexpected things happen. We lose our jobs. Things happen. And we go through things and they're hard things. But 
in all of these circumstances, we have to learn to truly draw from God's strength no matter what we're going through. Now, in myself as a pastor, I don't want you to, to look at me and think, well, you know, I want you to know if you look at me, I'm weak mentally. I'm weak physically. I'm weak emotionally. In myself, that is true. Not in Christ, but in myself, that is true. Uh, if you ever see anything in me that looks strong, that's God. That's His strength and His power. By myself, in myself, I can't even tie my shoes. I can't put two thoughts together. But with Him, I can. Sometimes we go through situations and we think, I can't be content in this situation. I don't see how, not only can I not be content, but I can't make it through this situation. But we can, but it's this in strength. Now, <clears throat> sometimes our minds get cattywampered. Look at your neighbor and say, yep, he's talking about you today. So cattywampered is an actual word, by the way. If you look it up, you'll find out that it is. Um, and it means messed up. I'm just going to give you my definition. It's messed up. Your mind ever been messed up? Mine has. Your emotions ever been messed up? Mine have. Uh, has your body ever been messed up? Cattywampered? Mine has. And, and you don't see how your mind or your will or your emotions will ever calm down. And you'll enter into contentment instead of stress. But God says we can do it. We can learn to do it. And we can learn by drawing from His strength. Now, I have some uh, scriptures that I'm going to pass out to y'all. We'll pass them out at the end today. Right, right at the very end. Um, or when we're changing over. Um, one of those scriptures is a hidden gem that I found from God's Word. It's Psalms 131 and verse number 2 in the Passion Translation. I just love this. I am humbled and quieted in your presence like a contented child who rests on its mother's lap. I'm your resting child and my soul is content in you. I love that. You'll, you'll have that one to take home with you. So my soul is content in you. My soul, which is my mind, my will, and my emotions. Um, another scripture in Matthew 5 and 7 in the Amplified says, Blessed, content, sheltered by God's promises. And to me, that's the way I personally, that's one of the ways, that's, that's the main way for me that I draw contentment from God. Is I can be, my mind can be all cattywampered. My, my emotions all cattywampered. My, everything's just out, out of sync. And then I personally, I have to take shelter, as that scripture just said, in God's promises. I'm reading it. I'm hearing it on YouTube. I'm, I'm hearing it through the Bible app. I'm, I'm absorbing it. I'm surrounding myself in it. Without His Word and His promises, I can't make it. I certainly can't enter into contentment in some of these situations in my life. And I know you have the same situations or worse. So I saturate myself with the Word of God. I don't have the strength to put one foot in front of the other without it. Now, I know there's a phrase in our society today, and, and I'm going to tell you what I think it means, and I'm, I'm not 100% positive. I didn't check it. Okay, you'll hear people say, well, I'm going to binge watch. Uh, this this series this weekend, you know, a lot of times, especially on a holiday weekend, I've heard it said a lot of times. Well, we're gonna we're gonna binge watch this series, and and the way I understand it, and I could be wrong. Um, in other words, they're gonna watch. They're gonna over their weekend or a time of several days, they're gonna watch every episode in a certain series. It, uh, maybe it's the first season or the first three seasons. They're gonna binge watch it. They're gonna watch it morning, noon, and night. That's that's what they're gonna do for two or three days. They're just gonna watch a certain thing like that, and they, you call it, I'm going to binge watch it. Now, now that I've heard years ago, I used to hear Gloria Copeland make the, the comment, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a binge, a Word of God binge. She said, I'm going to do a Word binge. And now I can really understand it a little better. In other words, she's saying, I'm going to get rid of all the distractions right now. Everything else that's pulling me in a different direction, everything that is not the Word of God, she said, I'm fixing to put it aside for a little bit. And for the next day, two days, three days, I'm fixing to binge the Word of God. And I'm telling you, there's times in our life we better binge the Word of God. Because, you know, sometimes we think, well, I've got the answers. I know what to do. Nah, most of the time we don't. And, and that's when we really, matter of fact, when we think we know, that's when we know the least. That's when we're standing on our own pride and our own arrogance. That's when we need to go to Him. We need to binge. We need to binge. We've been doing some serious binging in the last few 
especially the last few months, but especially in the last few weeks. You know, I told you all about uh, last week we were teaching about testimonies, how if you watch a lot of testimonies, it gets in you. And, you know, we have seen so many testimonies in the last week, and it's just in us. Uh, the, the power of God, the things that He can do. And it's just amazing all the things that He does for different people. And I like it. We were watching different ones from the 700 Club. They verify every testimony that comes through uh, their video service. Every testimony is checked and rechecked and rechecked to make sure that those people are telling the truth. I like that. That does a lot for me. And, and you can just actually type in on uh, Google or I don't know. It'll, it'll pull up on YouTube too. You can just say 700 Club Testimonies. And it'll pull up just an enormous amount over the last few years. And it's just incredible. Um, gosh, it, it just does so much for you. Um, okay. I know I'm giving you a lot of word, but I, I just got to. It's in me. First Timothy 1, 6, 6 and 6 in the CJB uh translation says now true religion and i'm going to change that word religion to christianity now true christianity does bring great riches but only to those who are content with what they have if you can't be content with being single you'll never be content being married <clears throat> if you're not content with your house the house that you have now you won't be content with another one <clears throat> We've got to be content in your current job for God to give you a better job. Or you'll be discontent when you get the better job. Okay, I'll give you an example of one of the ways the Holy Spirit worked contentment or has been working contentment in me. Certainly not arrived. I remember a few years ago, I wanted, uh, there was some appliance and they were showing it on TV all the time and it could do a lot of this stuff and I like kitchen appliances and stuff that can, you know, save time and whatever. I just like that kind of stuff. And uh, I said, I'm going to buy that. And the Holy Spirit checked me and said, mm -mm, not now. And I thought, I got the money. I'm not putting it on a credit card. I'm not doing nothing stupid. Um, he said, not now. I said, okay. And I, just like you were talking about this morning, I said, just wait. And so I waited, and I waited several months, several months. Then the Holy Spirit told me, he said, you can do it now. And I said, okay, and I did it. And he showed me he was working on the inside of me contentment. Being content with what I had before I got what I didn't have. See, because if we're not content, we'll be in a rush and we'll go out and buy it. We'll go out and do it. We'll, we, you know, we, we got to have it right now. And, and the Lord has to work that in us by the Holy Spirit. See, a lot of times it's, it's easy to depend on God when you can't afford something or you can't do something. But a lot of times we don't pray when we can't afford it or we can do it. Oh, that was good. That, it went over like a lead balloon, but that was really good. It was really good. Hmm. See, when we're discontent, we rush out to purchase it, even if we have to go into debt to get it. That was a Jeopardy moment. I heard it. But when you are content, you can wait. Tanya, if you hadn't waited, God was trying to give you something good, but if you hadn't waited, you'd have been in regret. There it is. That's the, that's the word. That's the word right there. Every time we're we're discontent, that's that's the that's the word. That's the rhema word. Every time we're discontent and we don't wait, we will enter into regret because we will make decisions that we shouldn't be making. We'll make them out of time, out of season, maybe out of his will, because we're discontent. Mm, I don't know if y'all can see that, but I sure see it. Okay. The Apostle Paul, again, he said in Philippians 4 and 11 through 13, he said, I've learned to be content. Why did he have to learn it? Because it didn't come to him naturally. It doesn't come to us naturally either. He went through some things to learn it. In, in the Amplified version of Philippians 4, 11 through 13, it says, I have learned the secret of facing life. That's being content. But we say, Father, I can't possibly be content right now. 
My mind is being bombarded with attacks. I feel like I'm losing my mind. These attacks are almost non-stop. I can't be content until I have peace in my mind. You can be content with anything that the enemy is using against you, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, you can still be content because God's Word is our highest form of reality that exists, and He said we can be content in any situation. No matter how hard it is, we can still be content. We can still stand because He's going to prop us up. He's going to help us. Well, Father, I can't possibly be content right now. My finances are a mess. I would be content if I wasn't in this place right now. That's not true. Because that you'd be in another place. There's something else that would do it. You've got to, we've got to learn contentment no matter what our situation, no matter what our circumstance. Well, Father, if I didn't have to wait right now, I'd be real content. That's not true. Because you're going to have to wait for something else. Father, I can't possibly be content right now. You see this pain in my body. I would be content if I didn't have this pain in my body right now. I have learned to be content with the gas tank that's full or empty. I have learned to be content with my body in pain or my body not in pain. I have learned to be content with no sleep or with a little sleep. I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I, when I say learned, I mean we're learning. We're all learning. You understand that? I have learned with little, I could be content with little money in the bank or no money in the bank or more than enough money in the bank. I have learned to be content with a little strength in my body or no strength in my body or a lot of strength in my body. I have learned to be content when the car works and when the car doesn't work. Well, you know, I have to have a new car to be content. That's not true. Well, I, I have to have designer clothes to be content. That's not true. Well, I have to have that promotion to be content. No, you don't. That doesn't line up with the Word of God. It's not true. I have learned to be content with whatever I have or whatever I don't have. I can be content in this present moment right here. There again, I have learned the secret of facing life for I have learned to be content and self-sufficient through Christ. In the Scripture that you guys are going to get, I've got it on the table here for the... Ushers, then y'all can do it when we switch up if you'd like. I'm humbled and quieted in your presence, just like we read a little while ago, like a contented child who rests on its mother's lap. I'm your resting child, and my soul is content in you. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That was awesome, Pastor. I'm telling you, I was very content when I met Pastor because I thought he was rich. And <laughs> no, not I'm just kidding, y'all. But I thought because he had a VCR, I had arrived. <laughs> Believe me, we didn't have things like that in our home, so I thought I was rich. <laughs> but I am rich spiritually, aren't you? Praise God. Thank God for His salvation, His goodness and mercy on me. I'm reading from the same area that Pastor read from, and starting with Philippians chapter 4 and verse 11 through 13 in the Amplified. It says, Not that I speak from any personal need, for I have learned to be content and self-sufficient through Christ, Sufficient through Christ, not ourselves, but through Him. Satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or uneasy regardless of my circumstances. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Let me read that one again. I am not disturbed or uneasy regardless of my circumstances. This is where Paul had gotten himself, praise God. And then verse 12 says, I know how to get along and live humbly in difficult times. And I also know how to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned, as Pastor said, I have learned the secret of facing life, whether well-fed or going hungry, whether having an abundance or being in need. Verse 13, I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers to fulfill empowers me to fulfill his purpose 
I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. I love that. Amen, don't you? Praise God. He infuses us with his strength. Amen. He empowers us with his peace. And I'm so thankful that he does because we're not going by our own strength. We're not going by our own power, but we are going through the power and the strength that Jesus infuses. Amen. Think about getting infused with with, uh, some kind of medical uh, uh, procedure. Well, you are getting infused with the power of God, with His strength, no matter what your circumstances are. You know, He is no respecter of persons. What He did for Paul, He's going to do for us. And He has done already, hasn't He? Amen. He's already strengthened our life. But, you know, we want to learn and be skillful at being content in whatever circumstances we're in. And, you know, as Pastor said, we're all learning. We may not have arrived yet, but we are all learning. So this is what we want to to strive for. This is what we want to master, just like Paul, to being content in every situation, every circumstance. So, you know, we all have challenges in life. We all go through situations, every one of us. You know, you're not just by yourself. You know, the enemy might try to make you think you're the only one that's ever gone through this. Well, you know, we've all gone through uh, every kind of experience you can think of. But everything can, uh, you know, it can be wonderful one day. You know, everything's just flowing. You know, everything's wonderful. And then the next day it just seems like, you know, uh, everything is going wrong. Everything is coming against me. Everything is falling apart. That's what the enemy wants us to to dwell on, to focus on. You know, everything can be good in our life and have one thing that goes wrong in our day, and that's what we focus on because the enemy is just putting that picture in our our, uh, before our face and in our minds. So we've got to learn to be content no matter what our circumstances. Amen. So we're not to be moved. We are striving and and we are learning to not be moved by our circumstances. You know, you might be facing a financial problem. I think Pastor might have brought that out. Or, you know, you might have got a a bad report from your doctor. Or, you know, your children might be acting up. You may have lost your job or you may have lost a loved one. Whatever it might be. Now, we're not, you know saying that it's, um, it's, it's, it's um, something that you can't have people pray for you about. We certainly, that's what, you know, that's what we do. We're Christians. We pray for each other. Amen. I need your prayers all the time. And I know you need our prayers all the time. And so that's what God will use us for. You know, a lot of people are like, God can't use me. I don't have any abilities. Yes, he can. And he wants to use you. You can pray for each other. Psalm 62 and 6, it says, He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense and my fortress. I shall not be moved. Amen. We're not leaning on our own strength, not leaning on our own power, but we are leaning on that infusion of Jesus Christ, amen, that we get from Him no matter what our circumstances are. So Paul learned the secret to being content. And that is, no matter what his circumstances he was in, he depended on the Lord who strengthened him. He depended on the Lord who empowered him. Amen. You're not going through anything by yourself. Amen. He's right there with you. He's right there in the boat. Amen. Isaiah 41 and 10, and this is the passion. It says, Do not yield to fear. For I am always near. Glory to God. That's a good one, isn't it? Hallelujah. I do not fear, for I am all, do not yield to fear, for I am always near. Never turn your gaze from me, for I am your faithful God. He is faithful. Amen. He is faithful to be right there with you. For I am your faithful God. I will infuse you. That's that word again. 
I will infuse you with my strength and help you in every situation. I will hold you firmly with my victorious right hand. Amen. We're dependent on a victorious God, aren't we? Amen. A God that is powerful. God's strength will get you through the most difficult circumstances. Like Paul, we want to learn to be content. We want to learn to lean on the Lord. We want to learn to depend on Him in every situation in our life. So, we want to remain stable, not to be moved by our circumstances. Psalms 62, 5 and 6 in the Amplified Classic says, My soul wait only upon God and silently submit to Him. For my hope and expectation are from Him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense and my fortress. I shall not be moved. No matter what our circumstances, we have to be determined. We have to be set that we are not going to be moved. No matter what this situation looks like, no matter what it sounds like, I'm not being moved by what they say by my circumstances, by my situation, I am not going to be moved because I've got, I've been infused, amen? Haven't you been infused today? We have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. You've been infused. Praise God. So in every circumstance, in every situation, we are learning to lean on the Lord. We are learning to depend on Him on his strength not depending on our own strength as pastor said we're nothing without him we're not standing on our own strength but we're depending on the strength of the lord we're depending on that infusion that he has given us the god amen we serve the god who is more than able not just able he is more than able amen he is more than able to work this situation out in your life. He's more than able to turn it around in your life. He's more than able to provide whatever that need is. Amen? Hallelujah. He is more than enough. So we are depending on the God who provides all our needs, the God who heals our bodies, the God who restores us, the God who delivers us, the God who delivers us from all our trouble. Not just a part of them, not just a little bit of them, but all of them. Amen? All of them. Ask big. Don't just say, well, if, if God will just take this away from me, it'll be all right. Give it all to Him. Cast it all on Him. Amen? You weren't made to carry it, but God is big enough to take it, isn't He? He's big enough to carry it. Cast all your trouble on Him. If God is for you, who can be against you? Amen? So we want to stay in peace. And you know, when you're calm, you're in peace. And you know, you're depending on the Lord, not depending on your circumstances. But we're depending on God. And in the middle of the storm, we can stay in peace through Him. Through that infusion. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus' blood is running through our veins this morning. Praise God. Glory to God. You will stay in peace. Now, peace is knowing that Jesus is with you in the middle of the storm. That is peace. I know I, this situation looks bad. I know that, you know, we are lacking in this area. But I know that Jesus is with me in the middle of the storm. And when Jesus is with you, the storm has to cease. Amen. It has to be still. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're learning, aren't we? We're learning the secret today. So being content is the opposite of being anxious. If we're being anxious, we've got to get back in that word. We've got to put some word on about peace. Amen. Got to get back in that arena of peace. And just let that anxiety go. It comes against all of us. You know, it comes against a uh, pastor and I, or tries to. But, you know, we all have to work on that, don't we? We all have to uh, get the word back 
as uh, presidents in our thinking. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 in the Amplified says, Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. And the peace of God, that, that peace which reassures the heart that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's the peace we want, isn't it? That's the peace we want that transcends everything else. So, you know, you might not be in the position today. You might be dealing with some, something right now. You know, you are, are not exactly where you want to be. Amen? But God... As Wanda always says, but God, praise God, but God hasn't forgotten you. Amen. He's still working his plan. You know, Jesus has a plan concerning the situation you're going through right now. He has a plan concerning your, your circumstances right now. And so we're just, all we're doing is standing. You know, when you've done all to stand, have you ever been there? I have done all. Well, you are in a good place. Amen? Because now you realize. You didn't realize before, and so you're trying to work it out on your own. That little brain is just trying to go, you know, figure something out. Well, now we've done, got where we need to be. I don't know what to do about this. Amen? So now we're standing, and we were trusting God. We can't do it ourselves, God. You've got to do it. You've got to work this situation out. You've got to change this situation. Amen. And you know, that's when we enter into rest. That's the only way to enter into the rest of the Lord. When we take our hands off of it, say, this is too big for me, God. I can't do it, but you can. You are big enough to do it, God. And so I surrender it to you. But he's working his plans and purposes uh, in us right in the middle of the situation, right in the middle of a hard place. You might not see it right now. You might not understand what's going on right now. You might not like what's going on right now. Amen. Hallelujah. But what God has planned for you is bigger than what you see right now. What God has got planned for you in this situation is bigger than what you see right now. Amen. And He's going to get all the glory for it. We don't get the glory. We know nothing. We know nothing. Amen. Let's just uh, agree with that. You know, without Him. I remember Keith Moore talking about um, that, you know, he's been, uh, is it the piano he plays, I think? Meaning when he's been singing for years and years and, uh, and playing the piano and, and writing his own songs. And so he... Um, I think he started getting to think, you know, that he's really doing something. And uh, so the Lord showed him one time. He took that gifting away from him. And so he's trying to play and write music and sing, and he can't think of one thing. And you know, that's where we're at without him. We can't think of one thing. He couldn't think of one note. He couldn't think of one word. He couldn't, you know, he was just helpless. So he knew without a doubt that his gifting, his ability didn't come from him. It came strictly from the Lord. And you know, isn't that the truth? If we really knew, we think we're in bad shape. We think what we're going through is, is the worst thing in the world. But if you didn't have God, and you're going through the worst thing you've ever gone through, think about that. But you know, even uh, if we've just got God, you know, going through a situation, if we've got Him, all we got to do is just know that He's working on my behalf. It's going to be all right. Amen? He is on my side, and I am on His team. I'm not on Team Sharon. I'm not on Team uh, Pastor Rock. I'm not on Team anybody here or there watching uh, by Facebook. I am on Jesus' team, amen? He is the captain. So I'm listening to what he says. I'm doing what he says. He's the boss, amen? 
He is the boss. Praise God. But God said that he would pay you back double for your trouble. I love that, don't you? He'll pay you back double. Not just pay you back, but double is pretty good, isn't it? Amen. Just like Job, he, he ended up having double for all that trouble he went through. So, you know, he said, God said that he will give you beauty for ashes. So whatever that situation you're going through, it might be hard right now. But on the other side of that situation, there is some beauty there. Amen. There is victory there. There is triumph there. So, you know, you're just going through. You're not camping out. You're not staying there. You are going through it, amen? And Jesus is right there in the middle with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. So praise the Lord. He is good. You know, just because we're going through a hard time, a struggle, a, a trial, or whatever it might be, you know, God doesn't stop working, you know. He, he, it doesn't cancel out the destiny that God has for you, you know, even in this hard time. It is temporary. Everybody say that. Temporary. Let's say it a little bit bolder than that. Thank you. Amen. It is temporary. Amen. And I'm going to end with this scripture here. Patty uh, quoted this scripture in her Wednesday night teaching. It was so good, Patty, talking about the eagle. This is Isaiah 40 and 31 in the Passion Translation. It says, But those who entwine their hearts with Yahweh will experience divine strength. There's that, we're, we're, you know, getting His divine strength, not our own. We're experiencing divine strength. They will rise up on soaring wings and fly like eagles, run their, run their races without growing weary, and walk through life without giving up. Amen. We're not giving up. Amen. We are going forward the Lord. Give him a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. He is good. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And the one can be making his way up. Father, we just thank you for your, your word today, Father God. You, uh, we thank you that you are teaching us, Lord, to trust you more and more and to depend on your strength, depend on your empowerment, Father God. Thank you for infusing us infusing us on a daily basis, Father God, with your strength and with your power, Father God. We can't do it alone. We can't do it within our flesh, Father God. We can't do it within our strength or our power, but it's your power. It's your strength, Father God, and we thank you, Lord, that you go with us. You walk with us through every situation, every circumstance in our life, and we thank you, God, that you have already won the victory. The victory is already ours, and we give you the praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We thank you for listening to today's program. We believe that Jesus died for our sins and that he has sanctified us for eternity. We desire that all come to the knowledge of him as their personal Savior. If you have accepted Jesus as Savior through this broadcast, or if you wish more information, we would love to hear from you. Contact us at Oasis Christian Center, Post Office Box 246, Smith Station, Alabama, 36877. Phone 334-520-7538. Or email at Oasis Christian Center at ctvea.net. You can visit our website at oasisfamilychurch.net. For those of you on Facebook, we do have Facebook Live every Wednesday and Sunday, Wednesday night 7 p.m. and on Sunday at 10.30. You may reach us by Oasis Christian Center a Family Church, Smith Station, Alabama. We'd also like to give you the opportunity to sow a seed into the ministry. You may text to give at 334 334- 274-7885 online giving aci online giving dot com backslash 4832 or you may mail to post office box 246 smith station alabama 36877 until next time god bless you and jesus is lord <laughs>